pretty busy on the U.S. Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. On this program, we look at the national issues of the Bahamas. And there is no doubt in our country that we have some parenting problems. And uh, if you go and you ask any law enforcement official, they will tell you. It's back to parenting. If you ask the politicians, if you ask uh, religious leaders, they will tell you that parenting presents a real challenge uh, in the Bahamas. And so on our program today, we are going to be speaking with someone who has been focusing on children for a little while. He is Pastor Ricardo Miller, and uh, he is the family pastor at Pathway of Life Church in Dallas, Texas. He's been on our program before. Uh, pastor Miller is uh, a Bahamian who was educated, of course, in the Bahamas and then at Christian Life College in Dallas, Texas. And it's our pleasure to, ha to have him here today. Welcome. It is great to be back on your show. Thank you, Mr. Jones. It's nice to see you. Um, it was about two years ago, was it's, it? That's to be exact. Yes, uh, sir. That, uh, yeah. that you were here. And um, were you with the same church? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I've been there now. Uh, this coming June will make nine years okay. at, at Pathway on Staff. Good. And you come to the Bahamas from time to time uh, to, to, to lecture, I think? Yeah, I've been coming home uh, the last couple of years. I opened an office uh, back home to try to strengthen the idea of the importance of reaching children. Mm -hmm. uh, I live with the belief that if the future is to be changed, children are the agency to whom change will come. And, and you know, you, you come at a crucial time in our development, and I guess you have the same challenges um, in the United States of America, right. in Dallas where you are, right. uh, dealing with adolescent youth. Um, and they uh, present society a great challenge now, don't they? They sure do. The, the problem is they don't come with a manual, and very few people really plan for them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah. just show up. Yeah. And, uh, and the Bible says, uh, train up a child in the way they should go. But that's unfortunately, the manual. Yeah, yeah, that's in the book. But unfortunately, most people are keeping children, not training them. Mm -hmm. And so keeping them doesn't make them be or do what they are supposed to be doing. Uh, you have to train them, and that takes effort, that takes work. You know, uh, and um, living in the times that, that we are living, um, you know, th th we are living in ch a changed society. Yes. This is a new epoch right. uh, that we are living in today. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? It is. Very much so. Um, and that's why I believe more now than ever, the idea of intentional parenting is a must. Because if we leave our children to chance, the system, our cultures, society at large will just grab them in. And before you know it, good children will go bad. What is intentional parenting? Intentional parent is understanding that your children are going to replace you and the areas of life where they are not prepared is the areas of life they'll suffer. The areas of life that they're not equipped to handle will be the areas that they will be most challenged in, in relationship, in, in finances, in, in culture, in community, in education, in friendship, uh, and, and so forth. They have to be prepared so that the mistakes that maybe the parents have made, they won't continue to make. You know, Ricardo Miller, we have in our country today um, a whole lot of parents who are well-schooled. Right. Some of them have degrees. Uh -huh. Certainly, a whole lot of them finished high school. Right. <clears throat> they are having difficulties mm -hmm. with their children. Back in the day, uh -huh. when you had parents who merely went to grade three, right. and some who didn't go to school at all. Right. They were able to bring up children, wholesome uh -huh. and well socialized. Right. <laughs> How is it today that in this new epoch, right. or this new dispensation, right. 
that you have educated parents, well-schooled parents, uh -huh. who have dysfunctional and delinquent children. Uh, one of the challenges the, uh, that, that is happening is because the parents of the past had support. Parents today may know better, but aren't doing better. The parents of that time didn't know much, but they had support when it comes to a community or a village. That all there were different people who had different strengths, and those people were allowed to influence your child. And so, in other words, you would have a guy, a gentleman down the street, you would have an uncle, you would have a neighbor who would instruct the child, listen, learn to save some money, respect those girls. Uh, all of those are instructions and helping to mold young men and young women to come up. However, we have a society now where we have a lot of educated parents and well accomplished parents. But they have fought to come up, but they did not do well in preparing their children to come up. So they went to school and they disciplined themselves and they made sure that they became something. But watch this. I told my son, my success is his normal. Let me say that again. I fought to get to where I'm at, but he is living in this on cruise control. The idea that he has his own room, the idea that he has his own play area, the idea that he goes to private school, the idea, I never knew that because I grew up in a single parent home, grew up to Washington Street, left school with an attendance certificate, felt like I would never be anything, and I fought to become, or still trying to become someone in life, that's me. However, I can miss if I'm only focusing on me and not capturing that he need to also discover because I can make it and lose him in the midst of me making it and saying, look at this boy, just didn't capitalize on the opportunities that I set up for him. But you coming from Washington Street, yep. Ricardo Miller, from humble beginnings, you had a set of values. Yep. All right? But if you go through Washington Street today, yep. <laughs> people who are in better financial circumstances than that you were in, than you were in, mm -hmm. Their children are not as socialized or do not have the kind of values, values right. that you have. Because values have to be taught. Uh -huh. It has to be instructed. My son said this to me a couple of years ago. Dad, can you buy me that shirt? And we were in the mall, and the shirt was like $27. And I said, you, you want this shirt? It's $27. He looked at me and said, yeah, can I have the shirt? And I say, I say, come here, come here, come here. And I put my arms around him, and I say, you see that lady over there? I say, she makes like $8 an hour. I say, now that shirt, she would have to work like three hours just to try to, to obtain that shirt. I say, now, I'm going to buy you this shirt, but understand the value of the shirt. Now, watch this. That was one of the shirts I never had to ask him to pick up off the floor. Now, the things he got where he didn't understand value were the things he never took care of, but the things we took the time to teach him on what value was in relation to things he took better care of. And so we have parents who are raising kids and giving them everything, clock, shoes, lawn, belt, giving them the best of life but not helping them to understand the value to the things that they're giving them. I didn't always have it this way. I, I mean, I gave my mother trouble. I, at, at the point, I remember when I left R.M. Bailey, they escorted us out off the property and said, please don't ever come back because we were troublesome boys. I remember selling beads uh, downtown to tourists, uh, ducking school. I, I remember doing all of the crazy things that a wayward kid would do, but eventually I realized I wanted more out of life. And I got some mentors in my life who helped me to, to redirect myself. I had to go to after uh, evening classes. I had to go to Saturday tutoring. I went to Nadia, I mean Miss Wisdom, at the uh, Academia behind Shirley Street Theater to do reading again. I was 18 because I wanted to learn how to read. And I found out that if I stay in denial of my deficiencies, I'll never become who God wants me to be. So you, uh, were, you were pushing yourself or somebody was pushing you? At a, at a point in my life, I realized, it was, I, I was about 18 years old, yes. I realized, man, this ain't it. This ain't it. You didn't have it together. No, I didn't have it together. And, and apparently, I remember a guy came up to me, and at the time, I thought I was cool. I thought I was the dude, and all of my friends was around. And I remember the guy said, man, you see y'all, little man, little man, just remember. But 20 years ago, I was you. I was you 20 years ago. 
And for some reason, that stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to. You didn't want to be him. I was like, you know what? And I knew his story because back in the day, yeah. he was the man. But now he was sort of like a Joneser. Now he was just crack, crackhead. And I, I thought, wow. I remember they used to talk about the, the, the stories of how he acted at C.H. Reeves back in the day. Uh, and so now we're, we were there sitting in his shoes as to being the guys uh, dominating the streets at the time. But I wanted something different. Caramilla, the children who are giving, who have the society on edge now, the young men right. and women, they were born in the 80s and 90s. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They were born in the right. 90s. Right, right. You check their birth certificates. Right. Their mothers and fathers are in their mid 40s. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the point that I make is that 40 something years ago, there was a shift, shift. Uh -huh. in the society. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I totally agree. After yeah. majority rule, uh -huh. there was a shift. shift. Yes. What caused that shift? I believe the code, the conduct, the code of conduct that we had established prior to 40, the next generation that came after had little value for it, even though they were benefiting from it. So they decided to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not going to do what my mother did. I'm not going to do what my father did. But not realizing a lot of what their mom and dad did gave them the values that they had to make them become somebody ultimately in, in who they are. Now, because they decided not to apply the principles that they may have were able to pick up along the way, they're now raising children that are basically having their own way. So the questions are, do you want to go to church? Do you want to go to that school? What do you want to eat? I told my wife uh, not so long ago, we were in the house, but we just have one son. And uh, I came home, and, and I travel a lot. And she says, uh, honey, what do you want to eat? And I told her, and then she says, hey, RJ, what do you want to eat? I said, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, you don't have two choices up in here. It's me. And I says, me and your choice. He don't have choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and she's like, what do you mean? Right? And I was like, no, you don't have choice. He's 13. He eats what we eat. Yeah. Now, you have a choice. I have a choice. He does it. And, and, and it's not because I'm trying to be mean, but I'm trying to help him to understand everything is not going to just be your way just automatically. I'm trying to help him to understand that, that there's value to everything. And uh, if you don't have value and understanding of it, you're going to abuse it and, and won't appreciate it for what it is. You know, uh, Mr. Miller, Pastor Miller, there are things that, there are fads. Right. Things are in vogue. Right. Right? And so there are young people who believe that certain things have gone out of style. Right, right. right. You know, things like good manners. Good manners, yes. Uh -huh. That they believe was in vogue or in style back in the 30s, the 40s, 40s the 50s. Yeah. But those things are not in style now. It's, it's, it's a little foolish to say, a good morning, sir. Right. Um, because they believe that that went out of style right. uh, way back then. What do you say to that? Here's what I tell parents. Principles don't go out of style. <laughs> Principles are laws that govern society. They're like lighthouses. They remain the same. And so what happens is we have a lot of young people who are trying to put principles in style because they just don't understand. If you don't understand the purpose for the lighthouse, you will say it's distracting. You will say, it's, it, it, you know, why is it there? That's a key spot I can use for something else. But when you understand the purpose of a thing, you get better use out of it. And I think what parents have not done well uh, is take the time to help children, help their home to understand that there are certain principles that if if not applied, will have its consequences. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing today is principles being violated. That's where we're at. And so 
No, it's not a style. It's a principle. And what we have to do is we have to help our society from a parent standpoint, from children's standpoint, that we don't violate principles because when you violate principles, there's a consequences to that. But how can you teach that when the parent who is 40-something right. uh -huh. has always violated right. principles. principles? Right. When the 40-something-year-old uh, know nothing of the value system that was used to bring up Ricardo Miller. Right. They, they, they believe that you were read on old-fashioned Fashion. values. Right. Uh -huh. And they themselves brought their children up on a new kind of paradigm, in a new paradigm, in a new epoch, <laughs> in a new dispensation. See, I believe everything that they, that those that are of my generation, I, I just turned 40 in, in October, uh, my generation, they know the truth. They're not applying the truth. So most of them, if you ask them, say, I know that. You know you need to talk to that boy, right? Yeah, I know. I, I just don't have time. Uh, you know that, that girl needs, she, she's about to turn right now. You need to spend some time with her. Well, you know what I told her when I was driving the other day? I told her, listen, she don't need to have sex. What in the world? You, what you mean she don't need to have sex? When you, when you say she don't need to, you just open curiosity on a whole nother level. And so there, there is a need for clearer understanding in regards to not just knowing, but the need to apply. How many people know better but don't do better? And that's what we're dealing with with parents. Most parents that I meet with when I'm doing parenting seminars, most of what I'm saying they know. But my, my goal now is to take them beyond knowing to that aha moment. Because until you get the aha, that, that revelation, that wake up moment, until I got it, the teacher didn't have no meaning. I, I tell people this. <laughs> Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe says, where purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. I add on to that now that, watch this, when you don't understand purpose, opportunities are not appreciated. So you can have the greatest opportunity presented to a person, but if they don't understand the purpose connected to the opportunity, they'll walk away from it. When you get the aha, you'll be like, oh. And so we have, you've, you've probably seen it before. I told you that last year. I told you that last week. And the person sound like they just got it. And that's where we're at. We're dealing with a lot of people who just hear us, but they don't get us. And what we need is we need parents to get the aha. This boy is not listening to you. Listening and hearing is two different things. I told him. Obviously, he didn't get it because what he's doing is showing something different than what you said. Uh, there's a, you're a pastor and you would know this line. I'm sure you would know this line in the scriptures. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Uh, I give you an opportunity to think about that. Don't answer it now. Uh, let's take this break. Uh, we're on the platform. And uh, we are talking about the foundations when we come back with the pastor of, uh, for family life at uh, Pathway Life Church in Dallas, Texas, uh, Pastor Ricardo Miller. We'll come right back. <laughs> you're good, you're good, you're good.